Okie dokie, so now we're going to be talking about radioactive decay and electron capture. And so whenever we're talking about radioactivity, I just like to take a quick moment to say that you could be exposed, this is not like toxicity, where if you're exposed to a toxic chemical, it can build up in your system, make you really, really sick based on prolonged exposure. Radioactivity is not like that. Radioactivity, you have to have a high level of exposure, and then you just need one exposure and you can get very, very sick. So an example of that is like the UV rays from the sun. If you go to tanning beds, especially a lot, you have repeated high intensity exposures, that's what leads to skin cancer. Um, but if you're exposed to low level, low energy radiation like microwaves, like radio waves, those types of things, it doesn't matter how long you're exposed to it because it simply doesn't have the energy to make you sick. You could be bathing in the stuff for hundreds of thousands of years and never have a negative effect because radioactivity is energy based. Chemicals are based on chemicals. So this is based on energy. So that's kind of comforting when you think about it, that you could be exposed to low levels and never get sick. So I just like to make that clear. Okay, so in these radioactive problems, we're looking at atomic number and we're actually balancing nucleons. So the nucleons is the same thing as the mass number, so that's the same thing as our protons plus our neutrons. That gives us nucleons, same deal as the mass number. Okay, and so for this, this is maybe a little bit different than what you're used to based on the periodic table. Our top number, I'll call that A, our top number here, this is actually going to be our mass number, our nucleons. And the bottom, that's our atomic number. Okay, and so let's talk about some different, uh, some different types of radioactive decay. When radioactive decay happens, typically um, protons or neutrons in the nucleus or electrons, they're converting to something else. But we know from the law of conservation of mass, everything still has to add up. So let's uh, look at the beta decay. Sometimes you'll see beta as the Greek letter beta. Beta decay of 3, 1, hydrogen. Okay, so in this, we've got protons. So looking at this, it's got a mass number of 3. We know that this is hydrogen, so it's going to have one proton. That means it's going to have two neutrons. Okay, I did not draw that very well. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse, but what have you. Okay, so this is our 3, 1 hydrogen. And what beta decay is, beta decay, when you think of that, what it means is that we are losing a beta particle, and a beta particle is the same as an electron, which we abbreviate 0, negative 1. Okay, so for an electron, its atomic number is the same as its charge. Um, so it could be written like this. It could also be written like 0, negative 1, beta. Don't get confused by that. Okay, so we've got our 3, 1 hydrogen, and that's becoming a beta particle and something else. So we know that we're balancing nucleons. We're also balancing atomic numbers. So we know that these top numbers need to add up. So 3 on one side means that we have to have a 3 on the other, that this number plus whatever number goes here has to add up to 3. Because this is 0, we know that that's going to have to be 3. Same deal with the bottom number, the atomic number, which we have 1 on the left side, so we know everything on the right side has to add up to 1. We have a negative 1 here. Right? So we have to ask ourselves what minus 1 will give us 1? The answer, of course, being 2. Okay, and because this is the atomic number, then we can look at the periodic table and we use the atomic number, not the mass number, because the mass number differs with the different isotopes, but the atomic number to determine that what this makes is actually helium. 
Okay, so on the molecular level, what's happening in beta decay is that one of these neutrons, so we, we got our beta particle, our, our, our um, electron. We know that helium has two protons. So what happened was one of these neutrons became an electron and a proton. And that makes sense because these don't have mass. Note the zero mass. These do have mass, so it has to convert to the same mass. And if this has a positive charge, its atomic number would be plus one. This atomic charge is minus one, so its atomic number is minus one. Plus one minus one is zero. So that's one way you can think about it. So this is what happened on the nuclear level. So one of those neutrons did nothing. The other neutron converted itself to a proton and an electron, giving us 3,2 helium and a beta particle, and that is called beta decay. Okay, so let's move on to another example. So beta decay, you should absolutely know that that always loses an electron. Well, what about alpha decay? Alpha decay. So in alpha decay, the alpha particle, or lowercase Greek letter alpha, that's the same thing as a 4,2 helium particle, which is sometimes written 4,2 alpha, okay? So that's what we're going to be losing. Okay, so in an example problem, if we start with 2,2,2 two, two, two over 8,6 radon, super not good for you, this is going to decay and create, if it undergoes alpha decay, it's going to make a 4,2 helium problem. And I want you to pause the video for a second and determine what uh, the product in the underline would be. Okay, welcome back. So we know that all the masses on the left have to add up to all the masses on the right. So we know that we've already got four here, so the answer will be 2, 2, 2 minus 4. So that's going to be 218. That's going to be our top number here. Okay, also all the numbers on the right have to add up to all the numbers on the left. So for our atomic number, that's going to be 86 minus 2 is 84. That's the atomic number, and if we look on the periodic table to see what element this is, looking at number 84, it's polonium. Perhaps my favorite. I relate to it. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. Okay. So that's alpha and beta. And we also know from our remembrance of unit one chemistry. There's also gamma decay, which is maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing. This one is the highest energy. Uh, but what this is, is basically pure energy. It's zero, zero gamma. So basically there's no change. This can cause a lot of damage, but you're probably not gonna be asked a math question uh, involving gamma decay that requires any sort of math because the mass doesn't change, the atomic number doesn't change, it's just energy coming off. So we're going to skip that one. And we're going to go on to positron emission. And what a positron is, and when you say emission, that's the same thing as decay. It's being released. It's on the right side of the arrow. It's a product. What a positron is, is a positive electron. So that's the pos, positive, electron, tron. Okay, so as you would imagine, this is going to have a positive one atomic number. And it's abbreviated E+. Plus. So in an example, maybe we'd have 18, 9, fluorine undergoing positron emission. So we know one of the products is 0, positive 1. So pause the video and you can determine the second product here. 
Okay, welcome back. So of course, 0 plus 18, the mass number, the nucleon number or mass number is going to be 18, so because 18 plus 0 is 18. And over here, this is going to have to be 8, because 8 plus 1 is 9. And when we're looking at the periodic table for atomic number 8, the isotope here is going to have mass of 18, and this element is going to be, whoops, oxygen. And the last type I want to talk about is actually the opposite. So those were all decay, so they would all have products on the right-hand side of the arrow, but there's this one called electron capture, where the capture implies that it's going to be a reactant. So electron capture, again we're working with electrons, 0 minus 1. It means the electron's going to be on the left hand side, it's a reactant. So if we start with 125, 53, iodine, and we undergo electron capture, what's the product? Okay, and so in electron capture, what's really happening is that an electron combines with a proton to make a neutron. So when this proton's gone, you kind of imagine that the atomic number would decrease, and we're going to see that in the problem. So mass doesn't change. We're working with electrons. Mass doesn't change at all. 125 electrons have basically no mass. It rounds to zero. Okay, and then over here, this is very simple. This side has to add up to everything on this side. 53 plus a negative 1 is 52, and that is tellurium. Okay, there we go. So that's electron capture. That is the only one that is a reactant, but super simple to solve for those. And it makes sense because the atomic number decreased by 1 because we've lost a proton. Atomic numbers based on the number of protons. Okay, that's what I've got for you. Enjoy.